little known fact about that song, when Miley Cyrus is singing like, we can't stop, we won't stop, like she's not talking about the LA party scene, she's actually talking about the Drupal 8 development cycle. <laughs> but too soon or come on. Um, <laughs> Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name's Matt Cheney. I work at the Pantheon. And uh, this session is on Drupal 8 CMI and a managed workflow. So hopefully you all had a good lunch. We can get in and we can get to this uh, you know, most amazing and wonderful of presentations today. Because I am a chaos wizard, I particularly love Drupal. I've been doing it for about 10 years. And um, I'm very excited, actually, to talk to you about Drupal 8 CMI, configuration management, putting your configuration in code, and really leveling up your development practice. Um, see, accreditation management is, in fact, my favorite feature in Drupal 8. I think it probably should be one of yours. And I think it's like fundamentally going to change how we all build sites in the future. That it's something that I think in 2015 and beyond that's a necessary uh, feature for any modern content management system or even software development project. And hopefully today, sort of as an overview, I'll really give you all a sort of understanding of what configuration management is, why sort of it got decided the way it was decided, how it works, and then we're gonna 100% live demo the beta 10. We're gonna do it uh, with Uber to Drush. Uh, don't clap yet, wait till it works. Because um, <laughs> I want people to actually see, see, see and rock this, so. Anyway, let's start the story. So in the beginning of the Drupal, you know, bang, sort of in a dorm room in Belgium, we have this like, you know, explosion of websites. These, uh, all the sites that we sort of all make here in our small way are part of this sort of explosion of Drupal, of Drupal stuff. You know, our websites are either made of stardust or of nuclear waste, depending on how you think about it. And um, that, you know, since that time, we've had this very powerful aspect of Drupal. Specifically, we have the ability in the website to like make little configuration changes and have it work differently. Um, and that's something that actually is very unique to Drupal, uh, or was, well, is unique content management systems and gives it a lot of the power that it has. Um, because when we talk about websites and when we talk about building websites, we have these two different pillars really, of, of stuff on the website. On one hand, we have the configuration of the site. These are the like content types to define the you know, fields on the blog post. These are the image styles of how you know, the dimensions or the modifications would work. These are the views of our listings of contents with their various filters. These are the variables and the settings and all of the different things that go into it. And these are things that as developers in the room we are responsible for developing on our sites. We write some code, we do some configuration, and we really define that site. And that is, that is configuration in Drupal. We also, on the other hand, the other pillar here is we have the content of the website, really what we need to have on that website. These are the actual blog posts, the nodes that are created, the user accounts that are set up, the comments, the menu items, the taxonomy terms we, we add. These are the, you know, the information about it. And these two things exist together in Drupal, which we can talk about some of that, but this is what we need to do to make a website. What becomes really important, and this is sort of the crux of why configuration management is important, is that the configuration that you're doing is something that you're doing as a developer. You're doing it on your local machine or on your development instance. And the content, the stuff that the users are doing, you're doing on the production site, on the live website. And these things become very different when we start to talk about it in the context of a managed workflow, which is also part of the advertised benefits of this talk, is we'll talk about sort of using configuration management to sort of run a really modern web development practice. Because if you're not already, you should all be doing some version of this for your projects. You should have a development instance where you're writing, and t writing the code getting the configuration right, and having that experience. You have a testing instance that you can actually push all that information, or that configuration and code to, to test it. Then you have a live instance where the new content's being created and the changes ultimately end up. But what you'll notice, especially if you have a site you've been working on for a while, is that you also have this other loop where 
as more blog posts and like taxonomy terms and stuff are added to your production site, you need to pull back that information into your development environment, refresh your, um, or you'll refresh your sandbox so that you're working from the latest and greatest. And the problem here, for those that are probably familiar, is that for code, this works just fine. I can like push some CSS changes and do it in dev, push it to test, push it live, and I have a pretty good expectation of what it will do. The problem is configuration, which is the stuff that we're gonna sort of ultimately be caring most about this hour, is stuff that is actually sometimes very difficult to actually re repeatably deploy to test and to live. Um, I won't ask for a show of hands in the room, but you know, I, as a developer, um, there are, you know, probably you've had the experience of having like a legal pad of like configuration things you need to do when you go live. So you push the code and then you like change some fields or modify some stuff or turn some things on or off. And that process is brittle. That process is, is prone to human error, requires time, and it also doesn't take advantage of any of the modern sort of continuous integration testing patterns, uh, a lot of which are talked about this conference. You can't run unit tests, you can't run you know, visual CSS regressions, you can't really even, even truly test your end result because you don't have, you have to do a human step to do your deployments. And that's basically the problem configuration management is trying to solve, is let's figure out that configuration that you're doing for your site and let's put that in code and let's that, let that be deployed. Um, there are, of course, ways to do this right now in Drupal 7, um, when, you know, Drupal 6 and before. Those we'll talk about as well, but like the configuration management in Drupal 8, I think, is, is sort of top notch and that's sort of, sort of what we're doing. Because, and this sort of is the crux of the problem with Drupal, is that Drupal doesn't really care about that configuration content distinction on a data level. These are some of the tables that a Drupal site, if you install it, will give you. You can see some of the tables are for field data, some are for variables and configurations. And that, you know, the idea of being able to sort of make some configurations on, in, in the database and push some tables or even part of the database to a new site is very, very difficult. And that's something that, um, uh, that all of the websites that we work on um, are gonna have this problem, that this, um, you know, the ability to sort of cleanly export that configuration is, is not, has not in Drupal been possible till Drupal 8. That even the sort of most advanced sites with, you know, using features and like extensive workflows, like they still, you know, as Charles Darwin said, like mirror, you know, have the undelicable stamp of their lowly existence and they don't have that kind of really cool configuration management. So this is now where we're sort of talking about, we're talking about uh, doing this kind of stuff. Because the world we live in without configuration management, the world that probably most of us on a day-to-day -day process work in, makes the idea of taking some of the configuration that's here, putting it into code pretty difficult. There are ways to do it, um, and I don't want to under sort of cut those ways. The, those processes have gotten us a long way. Um, there's sort of, in Drupal, there's a hook update end system that a lot of you might be familiar with. This is basically a function that you can put, a series of functions actually, in your install file for a module and every time you sort of, you know, push a new change with that module, it'll actually run a set of, um, uh, a set of like PHP logic from the Drupal bootstrap that can do stuff. This is an example from the um, Panoply images module. It does a, a large variable set for some information about some cropping, cropping requirements. Um, and that this is something when you're talking about sort of how do you re-simulate configuration, instead of just having a legal pad with a bunch of settings or sort of things you have to do, you could simulate this in PHP and some people do. You can set variables obviously, but you can also like do fake form submissions or do data imports or stuff. But this is a brittle process. It requires every single time you wanna do this to write some custom PHP code, you have to like simulate certain user actions and this is a sort of, you know, bespoke kinda, you know, artisan thing. You gotta like write it yourself. You don't have any cool export tools. So improving on this is sort of uh, features module, which I think we all know and you know mostly love. Um, I'm a big fan of features. I think it was a game changer for Drupal uh, when it came out. Um, it's more or less ushered in this world of feature-driven development, where people have the ability to actually you know write modules that have feature files that have the configuration export. And it's been around since 2009. 
Um, it's been, it's one of the most popular Drupal modules, and it's honestly a requirement for any large, or honestly even sort of seriously small site. And it's gotten us a long way in the community, and I think that's, that's really awesome. Um, but there are some problems with it that I think are sort of really where configuration management sort of picks up and, and sort of solves. And I'd say, like, the first issue with sort of features module is that it, it wasn't built to be a, a place to store configuration and code. Like, that wasn't, it wasn't its purpose to sort of do what it is now. For those that remember, features module was developed to allow for a, um, uh, a distribution of Drupal called Open Atrium, which is pretty fantastic, to have actually packaged sort of content together. Features module can make an image gallery with a bunch of stuff, or it can make a, you know, a blog system or something. It wasn't designed to export all your configuration for your site. It was just designed as really sort of the packages. Now, it will do configuration, and people have used it, but it has a lot of limitations in terms of what's possible. Specifically, it's a contrib module, so it doesn't have sort of core level, you know, sort of enforcement of any sort of practice. So if you've looked at the features code, it has a lot of sort of handling of like, to do a view, we use this system, or to do, you know, this thing, we do this system. And you have to work around, um, work around each individual contrib module. And also keep up with it. Contrib modules change. You know, exports are a little crazy. People are familiar with Panelizer module. That's like, has a ton of really interesting features integration. But, you know, you have to sort of do it sort of each one little bespoke. Um, you also have in Drupal core itself a bunch of like limitations around, for example, like there isn't unique identifiers for a lot of the objects, configuration objects in Drupal. Um, so you'll have, you know, auto incrementing values. But that becomes really difficult, you know, if you want to sort of associate, you know, this kind of thing with that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, features took us pretty far, but it, it sort of has, you know, it had to sort of deal with a lot of the sort of original sin of Drupal in terms of, you know, these, these limitations. Um, but one of the things that, you know, um, Commander Worf here can attest to is that, you know, like, you, in Klingon uh, society, um, if you have sort of, you're dishonored or you do something sort of, you know, a little off color, here is the uh, council, high council talking about uh, the House of Duras and his father's actions at Kittimer and such. But the, the issue is that um, with Klingons, you can have, if you have dishonor, you have the dishonor for seven generations. But one of the great things with Drupal 8 is that we're now at a point where like some of this like old <laughs> kind of history um, can, be, can be redone. And this brings us to Greg Dunlap. Um, so basically in 2011, when the Drupal 8 cycle was sort of kicking up, um, Greg Dunlap um, and some other folks we'll talk about sort of got together and says, look, like this, doing configuration with features in a sort of like hodgepodge way is not the sort of like, you know, big picture way we want to do this. That there's a better system that we can set up and develop to store our configuration and code. And so he sort of got anointed by Dries as the first Drupal 8 initiative lead to develop what became known as the content uh, configuration management initiative. And there's a lot of there's a lot of sort of discussion that went on to this. Most of this was public. You can read it on groups.drupal.org and some other issues. But the basic philosophy was let's create a system that will export all of the configuration that Drupal has into code and let's enforce it on a core Drupal core level so that all the config modules, configure, uh, all the contrib modules, all the, the custom code people write, all have to use this feature. And this will allow us to have a system where we can export all the configuration to code. And I think that's really cool, and he really kicked off uh, a large sort of initiative that ended up including a lot of other people. Um, so David Strauss, uh, one of my good friends, he also was really involved in terms of the technical architecture. This is his slide I, I took from him. And the basic idea sort of Greg and, and David came up with is we're gonna try to put configuration into code, but let's not like reinvent the wheel on this. Like there are a lot of solutions of how people do configuration to actually keep it, you know, in a versionable and, and sort of testable way. And so this is also in the world before Symfony sort of became the de facto sort of Drupal, Drupal direction. So they were sort of looking around at um, XML as an initial choice. The idea being we could take all the configuration, we could put it in XML files, and um, we can use sort of, you know, common parsing libraries. But Drupal's had a problem in the past 
for example, it's .info files, where it comes up with a sort of custom format of its own, does some fancy regexes. But for, um, for CMI, it's like, no, we want to use a sort of standard. What was also really inspiring sort of in terms of this choice is if folks are familiar with the Jenkins system, uh, it uh, uh, helps with some continuous integration uh, stuff. But Jenkins is really cool because Jenkins has the ability to do configuration in Jenkins in the UI, and it actually will write that configuration to disk um, in, a, in, in what becomes a declarative way, and this is very important. Um, that you can have a web UI to actually do configuration, but as soon as you hit save, you've made an assumption that says, this is the configuration we will have. And that's something that I think is a shift to from features, uh, if you're sort of familiar with how features does configuration management, that Drupal 8, it's, you know, there's not like default values for things. Like you have the configuration is the configuration is the configuration. And so you, when you export it out, you get that value, it's declarative, it's gonna be that value, and you sort of have to go for it. And so that's sort of what Jenkins does. That worked really well in Jenkins. Once Symfony sort of became the sort of marching orders for the project, it was switched from XML to YAML. YAML is a cool format. We'll be looking at it uh, as well. But there's a, there's a cool parser for it in Symfony, so you don't have to write any of that stuff. Um, and the idea was, okay, we're going to use the YAML format. We're going to put configuration into it, and then it will be YAML time. So I know these are camels. I just thought it was funny. Um, and the way that the YAML stuff works and the way the configuration management works is really simple. This is a settings form in Drupal. It's the site information form. We have some values. We have the name of the site, the slogan, the email address, the front page, the error pages. All values, hit save. Traditionally, this would go into the database with a bunch of different serialized values or individual values. Instead, it goes into a YAML file. This is the YAML file, it's system.site.yaml. You can see name, mail, slogan, error pages, this cuff. These fields save into these files, and that is how the configuration Drupal 8 is stored. No, it's sort of starting a little basic, but I think this is important because every value in Drupal that you're going to have some configuration ability to deal with is going to be represented in this kind of format. YAML is a cool format to read, doesn't have a lot of extra cruft, pretty straightforward, looks right in a diff too, we'll show that. And the idea is that, you know, you sort of have this representation. Uh, and there's, of course, a lot of representations, you know, for this. These are uh, blog types and blog fields. So you can see on the left, we've got a, a blog content type. On the, on the right, we have a blog body field. And these are all, if you sort of scan them, these are all sort of, you know, description text, help text. These are things that you're going to probably configure uh, as well. And we have tons of them. Uh, Drupal, Drupal 8 ships with all these different, uh, yeah, this, yeah, or the, all these different configurations. You export them out, you get something that looks like this. These are sort of logical chunks of configuration, and you sort of have them all on the scene. So that's sort of the idea. Configuration in YAML, not too crazy. Declarative configuration too. What's in the YAML file is what the value is. There's a lot of magic here. How do we work with it? Let's talk about that. Four, four ways. I'll show uh, to actually use this system to actually set values. So first option, we're just going to take a single configuration change, a basic title change, and get that. And remember, we're always working in a, in a managed workflow setting. So we have a dev environment and a live environment here. So we're on dev. We have a module in configuration management. I'll show this in the demo as well. But it's called configuration manager. Uh, you can go to admin config development configuration and get it. And you have an option here. Yeah, single export, single, uh, single item export, export, simple configuration, and let's go just get that same, um, same YAML file. And right here in the UI, you hit export, it'll give you, you know, the title of your site with all this information. So if you've changed your title, and then you go export, you get that YAML file that we have. And that's on your dev site, so you can have it all look, look on your dev site pretty fun. You have that file, you can uh, copy it down to your computer, copy and paste it, and then if you go to the live site and you want to actually do it, you go again to that single, single uh, import option, go to import, you type the system site YAML file, paste the configuration in, hit import, it asks you to confirm it, and then you actually have that value saved in the system. So pretty simple, export out on the dev site, copy it into the live site, 
hit save, confirm, you now have that value changed. And then the system title would be changed. And this is helpful because you have structured data that you're working with. There's not a lot of room for error. There's a lot of testability of this. We'll get more advanced in terms of how to use this. But the idea is you don't have to like remember to change the title of this stuff. You just have these files and you do it. Pretty straightforward. And that's for a single file. So, so option two. Say we want to take all the, all the configuration. Um, this, I think, might be one of the more popular ways that we do configuration management. Idea is that I've done a dev site. I've done a lot of work. I've changed a bunch of settings. I've done a bunch of different configuration. Now I'm ready to actually export it out. So I go back into the configuration manager module. I hit export, uh, and it gives me a tarball. This has all my configuration in it. That has all those files we showed earlier. And I can take that tarball, go to my live site, hit choose file, and upload. It'll like go through and actually now give me more information about what's changed. Oh look, we've got a blog content type. We have a blog uh, body field. We've maybe changed the site name. And next to each of the different operations, you see this view differences button. That'll actually show us uh, sort of a distinction. So oh look, the title's been changed from this to that. And you can start to see sort of that configuration that you were doing in the UI actually sort of be reflected as a change. And if you went in and hit that import button, you'll upload all the sites all the stuff, the, it'll import it, takes a hot second, and then you actually import it. And you've taken the full configuration on dev and pushes it to live. And that's pretty cool. Because now you have like this ability to have your live site have exactly the same configuration as your dev site. You didn't have to like go through a, like, a checkbox list of things to do, you just had to go export and import. And I thought that's pretty cool. Way three. So, of course you can use Drush for all these operations. Uh, the UI stuff, I think, is the easiest just to orient, but as we go deeper down, you know, suddenly you can do a lot of this on the, on the command line. So, uh, content management has a bunch of different Drush commands. We'll talk about a few of them. Config get, pretty obvious one. Basically, we can specify that system site, say we want the name value, and Drush will actually kick us out that uh, specific value, so it'll say, okay, the value of site is this. And that's sort of how you would interact. It's sort of on a, on a Drush level to get the data. So you can take that string, go on your live site, so you see Drush site alive, and say, let me go config set another, uh, another value and actually set those values. And you have this ability using Drush to take a single value, get it from one, set it to the other. Easy enough. Last sort of thing before we get into some crazy stuff. You can also use Drush to do the whole thing. I can take Drush and run an uh, option called config export. That's going to do that whole dump. But instead of like giving me a tarball that I have to manage, it's actually going to go and dump that onto the file system. Uh, one of the things that you do when you set up sort of Drupal is you can define what directory you want for the configuration management, like file, the YAML files to live. By default, it's set up in the files directory because that's writable in Drupal. And you can do it there. Not, you know, it's sort of its default behavior. But you can also define other places. So in this case, I've defined site's default config is where the config lives. That's just a value in the settings.php. When I hit Drush export, it exports all that stuff into site's default config. What becomes cool is because that's in my like version control root, when I actually do a commit, I can actually do a full uh, git commit and take all that configuration and push it into a you know, specific commit hash. There's one right there. I can then deploy that code to live and then run a config import command to actually pull it all in. You'll see I'll get some information there about what's going on. And that this is the workflow, this last one, that I think is really, you know, from a programmatic level, sort of what you would end up doing on a really regular basis. So let's talk. Where's the magic? It's in the workflow. Dev exports YAML, YAML exists, goes into import, import goes to live site, and we all, you know, party time. Okay? All right, now we're gonna do the demo. Um, I'm demoing off the latest version of Drupal 8, beta 10, which is actually pretty nice. And I'm going to show a few different things. So, first thing I've done, oh, that's good. First thing I've done is, I, so I've, 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 done a, I've set up a site on the Pantheon, which, is, uh, which has dev test and live. And we'll get that a little bigger so we can see. Okay, cool. And the only thing I've done is I've taken that latest version of Drupal, 
and I've gone ahead and installed it. So we have a dev, a dev instance, test instance, live instance. And I've also gone ahead and ran that drush config export command once, just so we actually have all of those YAML files. So I can actually go in and, you know, this, uh, you know, you'll see, these are basically all the YAML files for the entire configuration of the site. And I, you know, only did the install, so it just has like the site name and some other stuff off the default. And I've logged into each one, this kind of thing. So first thing I can just show you, just from a sort of browse around standpoint, is the actual configuration management, the stuff I was showing, all lives in this module called configuration management. And if you go to it, you'll see the kind of stuff we saw before, single export, full export, and then synchronize. And the single export, sort of, I think the slides do pretty well. You can just, you know, go to a simple kind of thing. Oh, um, pick, the kind of, pick the kind of thing you want from export. And you can get, you know, any kind of values that you want, depending on what, on what, what the settings is. And so that'll be helpful for a little individual thing. But what we're really caring about here is that, is that full, uh, full export. So if I want to go ahead and get that tarball, looks like this, I grab it and it'll generate it, and then let me save it. Okay. But let's do, cool, let's do some really cool stuff. So here's the sort of scenario. I've got this dev site that I'm working on, and I'm trying to build, you know, make some changes to the site. So we'll first just go in and we'll just make the basic change. We'll make that site information change. Instead of calling it my great DrupalCon LA site, I'll say my great CMI DrupalCon LA site. And I'll go ahead and hit save. And this is a configuration. This is now created you know, that value. And then what I can do is jump in on my command line. I have my Drush site set up. So you'll see, I can go ahead and, um, this is uh, doing on the dev site. And I can run this command called config export, which is uh, what will actually export out all the config. So it's gonna take all that stuff. Tell me, oh look, system site has an update to it, great. I'll go ahead and hit export. And then, well, bam, surprise, if I go up here, uh, we've now seen site's default config system site YAML has been changed. If I go look at it, you'll see old value, new value, and I can actually go ahead and do a quick commit here, you know, changing the title. And what's really great about this is that, like, now this is going to go ahead and actually make that a full git commit. It'll have a git hash. And that as a developer, you can sort of start to see you know, what I might be interested in doing is not just doing config changes, although those are powerful, but I'm also might be interested in writing some other code too. So I can do some configuration changes, I can write some module code, some theme code, I can do it all in one commit, and that's like, you know, and that's this commit that has this information. So when I do a deployment, now I'll go to my test environment, I'll do a deploy, and I actually push that code, it's gonna move that from the dev environment to the test environment, and now I have in that directory, site's default config, an updated YAML file, which is pretty cool. And now once I do that, and I'll go back to my test environment, um, I have a couple things I can do. So, looks like it's deployed. Okay, cool. Um, if I go back to my test environment, and see, you see at the top it says test, just because we're in the test environment, and I go to configuration, and I go down to configuration management, I actually will now use this uh, synchronize tab. And this synchronize tab is basically saying, okay, let's go scan everything in that y the YAML files, and let's see anything that like, you know, looks like a change from what we had before. Let's let people see the change right here. And then if we want to actually do the import, we'll go ahead and just hit import and it'll do it right there. So it'll go import that in, cross our fingers, looks like it's successful, and not that I necessarily convince you, but now I have, you know, changed the title for my great CMI Drupal LA site, which is really cool. And as you guess, if I went to live and do a deploy there, it'll work basically the same way. And this is cool because now, instead of going just beyond the YAML files, I've, um, you know, actually been able to do things automated. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're all good now? Let's go, let's go even crazier. Yeah. Um, it is... It is, this, it is sort of like doing a features revert. So the, the, the process here is you're basically telling Drupal, hey, there's new config, go push that in. It'd be like doing a features revert, but it's more, because it's more declarative, it's sort of like, 
It's almost like installing a new feature and having to override everything. Um, so now, let's, now we can do a more advanced case. I can go to my dev site, and I'll maybe go ahead and hit like, uh, uh, you know, create a quick content type. So I'll go into content type, and I'll, I'll go ahead and add that blog post. And I'll do, you know, blog post, uh, oh, a burst of genius. And I'll go save that. Because configuration isn't just like little variables, like it can be full on, you know, content types and fields. I could go add an image field if I wanted um, as well. We can, I'll go show you that one. And so go image, you know, picture, and then go ahead and save. And so I'll, I'll go, go create that kind of stuff, hit field settings, and tell you what, maybe let's even go do, just for fun, because views is in Drupal 8 core, which is pretty awesome. Um, I'll go ahead and add a new view for the blogs, and call it blogs, and we'll just show all of, all of type, type blog, and we'll go save and exit that. And with a little bit of work, we now have got that view, we've got that content type, and if you were to go back to that dev site and run config export again, it's gonna go and detect, hey, we got some fields, we got this view, this kind of stuff, and it'll go, um, it'll go drop that in, and we basically can go through that same process. Uh, here's now the eight files changed, different YAML files, you know, migrate blog system. And what you would see here is that, like, not only do I have this configuration, but I could also add, you know, maybe some CSS styles for the, for the blog system, or I could add, you know, some other modules that are dependent or whatever, and I can get one really solid git commit that has that configuration and that code that's necessary to really put it all together. And that's something I can test against. I could do visual regression testing, I could run unit tests against, I could run any battery of tests on just that commit. And now I've taken this entirely out of the realm of any clicking, I just have the export, and then I git commit, and it's good to go. So we'll go ahead and deploy that. Yeah, and that's an important difference, I think. Like, features, you'd used to, like, take little features and, like, you know, put it in little bo box here. In this case, you just dump everything there, which is cool. Yeah? Yeah, so well, one thing that exists is the YAML files are sort of in this, in this sort of like storage kind of staging directory. When you actually, for the runtime, it doesn't load all the files every single time. It actually does all that cache, it caches that information. And then that's what it uses during the runtime for performance reasons, which are pretty cool. Yeah, not in the database. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have a slide on that later. <laughs> and in Drush command, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, so one thing that's, I think, really cool about configuration management, I'll get a little bit of this a little bit later, but that because you have declarative configuration, you don't necessarily have the same ordering constraints of other stuff. You don't have to have one thing turned on before another. So you could turn on a module, have the configuration for it, but because the configuration is like a clean YAML file, it's not like you have to have all that runtime there in order to run the import process and stuff like that. So you actually get some uh, get some improvements. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so great, so great point just to, for the recording. The, um, so one of the things that this, this absolutely changes, where I think a couple of folks have picked up on, is that we're talking about full config export. So people are gonna develop and they're gonna dump a ton of config every time because if you're doing config export, I mean, obviously the stuff I changed is there, but a lot of developers change a lot of things a lot of the time. And I think there's some strategies to deal with that. We can chat a bit more about, but I think you know that's, that's a limitation. I think things like developer settings, I think there'll be ways to exempt some of this. And there's some override stuff I'll show in a minute. Um, but you all, I think, get the idea on the workflow, sort of makes sense. 
Um, a couple other things just I want to, that are sort of related to configure management that are really helpful. Um, the first is that like Drupal, and this is new with beta 10, is actually has a lot of smarts with the config, with the dependencies. So I create, you know, I made a blog type and I had that blog type and added it with a view on it. But if I was to go in under my content type and I was to do like, let me go remove that blog, uh, blog post content type, there's a section here called configuration deletions that exists. And it actually will tell me, look, yo, if you're removing a content type called blog, like you're gonna need to lose those fields also, and you're gonna need to actually lose that view because you can't have a view of blogs without a blog content type. What also becomes really cool is if I had actually gone in and added, let's say, an actual blog, burst of genius. So we'll go do, you know, migrate post. You know, migrate blog post for LA. And if I actually have a full on um, uh, blog post like this, and I try to go back and do the deletion, similar to Drupal 7, you know, hey, it's used by one piece of content, we can't do the deletion. And understanding those relationships between things is really important because that means that, like, it's harder to blow away or hurt your site with some exports. Okay. Well, so that's the workflow, sort of, you know, does that make sense to people in terms of just getting deployments? I don't know if it's too basic, too advanced. But this is what you're gonna do as developers. You're gonna create these situations where you're doing commits with configuration, and then you can do deployments with this kind of stuff. All right. Let's get into some even more cool stuff. So that's, the, that's basically the demo. You wanna try this out, install Drupal 8. You can get a, uh, on Pantheon we have a Drupal 8 sandbox you can spit up in a few minutes. A lot of other people have that, and you can install it yourself. Definitely try off the beta 10, a lot of energy here. So hopefully it's good. Um, otherwise I'm, you know, blame factors beyond my control. Okay, so let's talk about some more, getting some of the more of the development patterns, some of the more sort of advanced kind of topics, because I think this is gonna be relevant to our sort of day to day here. First up is that as developers, things like variable get and variable set are no longer in Drupal 8. Those aren't things that you're gonna use as a developer. Instead, you've got this you know, configuration API. Drupal, Drupal 8 has four, four APIs of this sort. Um, configuration state, um, cache, and then the, the um, which department was it? Yes, thank you. Um, configuration APIs like this, you can do the, you can call a get, a get on a particular variable, so system site name, sort of see how that pairs up, and get this value. You can also go ahead and set as well, so you can set a name to something else, hit save. This is the pattern if you're doing variable get and variable set that you're gonna end up using. So that's a pretty cool way if you're writing a module or you're writing some code you need to access or set stuff, you do it this way. Sometimes you've got values that you don't necessarily want into, in the configuration, like stuff like, like Brant was saying, if you have a developer and you wanna have a development API key for your Google Analytics, but you don't necessarily want that to be part of the configuration you deploy to production, you can use an API called state API that basically sets things like last time is cron is run or developer API keys or, or settings that you need to run the site but aren't necessarily going to want to have in version control as part of what you deploy. And so you can do get and sets for particular environments without having that affect the larger sort of configuration stuff. So you'll probably end up doing this a little bit if you're trying to do some stuff that isn't necessarily configuration for deployment but you need it in a particular environment. Same thing if you're looking to do some overrides of configuration. So like in settings.php, right now you can override Drupal variables if you want. Configuration management sort of takes that same approach. And so if you wanted, for example, to put your site into maintenance mode and set a message, you don't necessarily need to have that message be saved in dev and pushed up. You could just change the settings.php file and it would override that. Same for any other use case. And this could be situations for, if I'm a developer and I have some develop settings, I could drop that all into settings.php and use it that way. And then mine could be different than my friend who's also working on the site. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if you don't like GIFs, you could, you know, have your image field settings, you know, not let that, con that kind of a file be uploaded or whatever you want that you have full access to the different configuration management stores. And that's pretty cool, because then you can have very localized, localized kind of, kind of a world. Um, I mean, it depends, you, I mean, in settings at PHP, you have a lot of, like, uh, a lot of power like that. Um, but, you know, just, if you want to just have the module labeled, you have to do that slightly differently. But you could have settings for the modules that you would override and have it really cleanly right here. You, 
you could you could do that in the Babel module. There's the module enable. Uh, there's versions of module enable, module disable that you could call, and that would you could sort of force that on to say every time I run this, I want this module enabled, no problem. You also have the ability to modify different languages. For developers, you have like a multilingual site. The YAML files allow for the same sort of ITN prefix, prefixes, so you can have you know, hey, we've got like some Dutch language, or we've got some. Um, you know, Hungarian language. And because you're gonna have like a site title or other labels in different languages, it supports all of this, all of this pretty cleanly, which is pretty excellent. A few limitations. So okay, th that's sort of the developer kind of stuff you might end up using. Some limitations and some other modules that we can go, and then we can get into a little more QA in the last like, you know, five, 10 minutes of this thing. Um, so question from before. So one of the problems you're gonna run into if you start to do this for real with other people is that you end up actually having a lot of different Git branches and developers that are changing and doing stuff at once. Like I can give you a pretty clean demo with like I'm gonna add a blog post and push it from dev to test because I'm the only one working on the site and it's a pretty simple change. But what happens when I'm making a blog system over here and my friend she's got like you know a whole different forum system and like somebody else is doing some other you know thing on the site. We're all committing config in different ways. We all have different feature branches we're working from and we're all trying to sort of, you know, push up the latest and greatest. We don't want to override our stuff, right? We don't want to say, oh, I'm going to dump all my config on my dev site and force that as the issue because I might not have made a config change that somebody else made. And because we have declarative configuration, if I'm saying, oh, well, you know, let's like, you know, dump out my config, if it has a different value, it'll start to override. So the answer to this with uh, Mr. Greg Anderson uh, has created a, a Drush command called config merge which is uh, currently in Drush uh, 7 RC2, should check this out. And basically what this does is this says, look, if I'm working with CMI and say my local computer, and I'm like, you know, wanting to actually like commit my work, instead of just doing the export and pushing up that code, I can run config merge and I can tell it the targets that I'm interested in sort of like merging. So I could say, okay, I've got my local sandbox where I'm working on, I'm gonna take that local sandbox, run config merge, it's actually gonna get that export from the dev site or the live site, whatever, pull it down into my local things, merge the changes together, and then as one commit, sort of push it right back up. And that this is the kind of thing when I'm actually interacting with feature branches and different developers that I'm gonna do on the regular. That like I'm very interested is when I actually do that merge to be able to kick you know, all of the different features together and give that clean commit that represents the most up-to-date configuration. Um, and so you can get this, uh, it's in Drush 7 RC2, so new features and different kind of support for you know more remotes and this kind of stuff that's coming. But this is something I feel as developers we're going to end up for using configuration management use a lot. Um, you also have this problem uh, sort of in terms of limitations that um, Drupal 8's configuration management system was designed to export all the config for just one site. That it's not actually very good or very well designed for doing you know sharing configuration between sites. You work on a Drupal distribution or you have like, you wanna make a, like a press room feature that you're gonna share with all of your, you know, all the sites you're making for your organization. Um, it doesn't really let you do this. You're just getting a big export of all the configuration. So luckily, um, there's gonna be a features for Drupal 8 that's gonna directly address this issue. Features is something obviously that before was used to do that code, code saving, but in Drupal 8, features actually gets to do really what it was designed to do. It doesn't have to deal with the setting and, and getting of values. It's just gonna do packaging for features. This is what it looks like in Drupal 8. There already is a version of it out. You can play around with it. If you're really interested in it, I would definitely um, go on Thursday to check out Mr. Potter's talk. Uh, and he'll, he'll sort of show you the whole thing and talk all about it. A Couple other things. So this is Drupal 8, obviously, as we talked about. Um, there is a version for Drupal 7 if you're interested in playing with it. It's not exactly the same and I definitely recommend using the dev branch of this module, but Drupal.org slash project configuration will let you try some of these same patterns in Drupal 7. Um, I'm not sure I recommend you do this necessarily for production, production sites initially, but I, if you're looking to check it out and you're working on a Drupal 7 project and you want to sort of see how it would work, this will get you a lot of those same patterns with the different you know, CMI data stores. Something else that sort of becomes an issue is trackability of your, of your changes. So the demo I showed, you have to formally go do that config export every time you want to actually export your stuff. And sometimes it makes sense because you can like logically group your features. But if you are very interested in having very granular auditing of the different, of the different stuff, it's a Drupal module called config tools that'll actually set it up to do a git commit 
every time you make a config change. So you can get a pretty clean record of when and how and allow for sort of reversions if you need it. One thing, this is my favorite one. Um, so one other issue that you run into is I showed you the dev workflow, dev test live, that's totally a best practice. Also not necessarily something you have to do. That all of the config changes I was doing on dev, you could have done in live. And if you have a particular customer or client that's like sort of a little bit overexcited, they may go in and do those, those config changes on the production server and you know, cause a little bit of mess to the project. Really great module is something called configuration read only mode. Doesn't do a whole lot, it just tells you not to do any config changes on the live environment. And that's something that I think would be a totally good best practice to use. Hey look, you shouldn't do config on, the, on your production site, you should only do it in dev, so we're just gonna force that to not be the case. You don't always want that, but in some cases you do. It's a module for that. Last couple of things. Uh, sometimes, you know, sort of working with features, this is the fantasy of features. You, if you have modules that provide their own configurations, you can get a little bit of confusion around that. It's a configuration update manager that'll actually look and sort of say, hey, I installed this module, it had these configuration values, the new version maybe has changed some of them, how do I handle that? And this module does a lot of work, work with that. So this is a cool one to have. Features will require it, so it'll work pretty well like that. Um, it's also sort of the case that if you're doing a lot of development and you're trying to get out a lot of the different configurations, that you know, sort of getting a specific uh, kind of configuration export out can be a little tricky, especially if you're doing a lot of development. Uh, Chicks maintains this configuration development module that does a lot of quick exporting. So if you're a module developer and you're trying to develop this stuff and want to work with it, this makes it really easy. But let's just talk big picture. Like this is, configuration management is really the kind of technology and techniques that I think we'll pretty much all use in this room for, you know, for pretty much the rest of our like web development life. That, you know, having configuration values in the database, that's things that we can't version control, we can't test against, we have to like replicate on a like, like production site. It's just, it's, that's not, not sort of where this industry is going. And I think it was really awesome that we got, you know, configuration management into Drupal 8. It was one of the first things that got done. It's one of the things a lot of people are really excited about using. Um, it is my favorite feature. And I think that, um, you know, I invite sort of everyone to sort of try it out, you know, check out the different, you know, config modules and watch the space. Like the core system for configuration management is pretty powerful, but there's a lot of contrib modules and other practices that are coming. But with that, I think, you know, definitely, hopefully you get a little bit excited about configuration management, sort of see how it works. But other than that, I'll take some questions. And um, thank you all for your attention and time to watch this presentation. So yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess there is the mic. Um, can you exclude specific sections of config for export so they don't get exported anymore? Um, yeah, so the question is, oh, you have the mic. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, no, actually, that's, I mean, there, you, there are ways you could do that, but that, like, the general practice is that, you know, you're going to want to export, export out, you know, the, all, the stuff for, all the stuff for the site. One of the techniques that I have seen is that, you know, when you do the export, you're right, you might have done some other configuration that you didn't want to do in the git commit, and that's something you can actually use git to sort of handle, that you can sort of, you know, sort of add only those YAML files when you do the export that, um, that exists. Um, although it wouldn't surprise me if that if you, you, the export function could be extended with some variable or some some parameters to have some restrictions, I think you know it's one of the things when I demo it, it's pretty clear. Like I made this change, obviously I want that to go. But in the real world, you're doing a lot of different changes, and you have to be sort of careful. Um, and luckily, when you do the export, you can do some management and get to only deploy the stuff you want. The main reason is because features it was used as a uh, side config it was meant as packaging specific sections of config that you can share between sites. Yep. If you want to do that or you just have one specific content type you want to share across three different sites, you have to be able to exclude that from a site-specific configuration export. Yeah, that's, well, I mean, and that's, this is the distinction that's, that's, that's very important from features to, to CMI, is that in features you do have, very, you're sort of, you're selecting the kinds of stuff you want to export. You sort of have an opt-in kind of strategy for configuration export. With, with configuration management in Drupal 8, you assume you need all the configurations, so you do that sort of full export. And you can play some games with like making sure you're just getting out the stuff you want, but the base assumption is that all the configuration will be exported for that site and will exist in those YAML files, and that's what will be imported in the site. That it's a it's sort of a different model, but I think it'll work better for the kinds of like sites we're building, you know, for a single site to do it. 
With respect to features, definitely check Mike's session out on Thursday, and he'll talk about using CMI to actually share features across sites, which is pretty cool. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Are blocks considered content or config in CMI? Um, config. <laughs> the blocks are configured. Are, are, conf are configuration. They're, they're content. No, the, the settings are configuration. Oh, are they? Okay. Um, so you can you could have, for example, you could change the blocks the blocks on like the, your your page. You could push that out in the CMI, and you can do deployment for that. Okay. Yeah, we've had some experiences with clients updating blocks on live, having to regenerate the feature from live. So we've. Oh yeah, because like the ordering and yeah. stuff is a little crazy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's one of the things why I think that read-only configuration module is pretty cool. You know, sometimes clients do want to do some configuration changes, but trying to lock some of that down is helpful because you can move stuff around in sort of weird ways. Yeah. Hi. Um, install profiles. Is there just a directory where I dump the configuration in, or do I have to register somehow what I have uh, in terms of configuration for install time? Yeah, so great question. So install profiles, there's actually a, you know, uh, there's like a framework for doing this where if you're making an install profile, you can actually just dump your CMI or your configuration from an existing site into a directory, and then there's some logic that will actually import that all in as part of the install profile installation. And so like to actually make an install profile ends up being pretty easy because you just configure the site the way you want, you export all of the config into your profile directory, and then you set it up so when you do an install for that installation profile, it'll actually dump in all of the config um, into the database. So, so you don't just, need... just dump it in yeah, into wholesale. a in the, in the thing. Wholesale. Okay. And I could and see it some... gets picked up automatically. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, you have to put some logic to do it, but yeah, you pick up the whole thing automatically, and what you could do on top of this is actually then have some additional configuration screens to like change things like the title or some of the other stuff. But I think it'll make it a lot easier to make certain kinds of distributions with, with CMI because you don't have to worry about to have features all work the right way. You just build the site the way you want. You can clone it sort of in mass, which I think will be pretty cool. Cool. Awesome. Couple more? Yeah. So when you change a setting from the UI, it goes on and changes the YAML file. Uh, so once you do the export, yeah. Yeah. So what happens if you change the YAML file? Then you have to trigger Dresh to pick it up? Yeah. So if you change the YAML file directly, which I wouldn't recommend, but you, mm -hmm. you could do, um, you then have to either go into configuration management and go to the synchronize page or run the Drush config import command, and that'll then scan those YAML files, detect a difference, and then push that mm -hmm. difference up to your Is site. Is there any talk about using kernel events to see what YAML files are changing and synchronize on its own or anything like that? Um, no. I mean, you, you wouldn't need to. Drush, Drush will give you a pretty good set of, of, of output of what's changed and what's being imported. Okay, thank you. Yeah, last question. Hey, Matt. Um, so it's actually similar to the install profile, but, but slightly different. Uh -huh. I'm wondering if there ha is any concept yet of just increasing specificity of locations for config. And the reason I'm asking that is in the install case, if you're using a distribution and something changes upstream, mm -hmm. what you mentioned doesn't really work because that's just a single point yep. in time. You, you do an initial dump and then you're on your own from there. If that changes upstream, you don't get that. Um, unless there was some sort of a, well, you know, um, I'm more specific now, and now my my configs now take over whatever was, you know, and you can see some diff, et cetera. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, I would say I don't have a great answer for that, honestly. Um, I think one of the things, and this may be a good thing to close on, is that, like, um, you know, the the kind of specificity that I think you're, that you're talking about that I think people will need are things where there's like, there's some options to build additional contrib space kind of work and some additional patterns. That like, this is all really new. Like there's not a ton of Drupal 8 sites. There's not a ton of people who have really developed big sites with this. And that one of the things I think sort of in terms of watching this space is once configuration management becomes more, more wide stream, the Drupal community has a great amount of like customization and different patterns. And I think the stuff that we think now about how this is gonna be used is something that might very well change. And you know, might be different, adapted in different ways. And I think one of the great things about Drupal 8 with semantic versioning is that a lot of this, some of this stuff can be updated and improved in Drupal 8.1. So I'd say in general configuration management, start learning, start working with it, see the different patterns. And you know, when you run into use cases that are sort of new, start posting about it and talking about it. Because I think there's a lot of flexibility, as Drupal does, to do this kind of stuff. Right, both so. in Simver and in Contrib, potentially. That's right. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Otherwise, um, everyone have a fantastic DrupalCon. And, uh, <laughs>